Good morning, everybody. Uh, Fergus Dolan here from NALA. Um, great to have you here this morning for the first of our Maths Week and uh, numeracy webinars. This morning, we're delighted to have Tony Sweeney from Mayo. Hi, Tony. Yeah, hi, Fergus. And my colleague, Margaret Murray, is uh, helping me with admin and all that. Hi, Margaret. Hi, Fergus. Hi. So uh, it'll be the usual if you've been to NALA webinars for Tony's going to uh, make a presentation. And then at the end, hopefully we've five or 10 minutes for questions and answers from Tony. And so you just so you know, we will forward Tony's um, presentation to everybody who's booked in today. And we'll also record this as you just heard. And in next sometime next week, I have time to edit it and put it up onto the NALI YouTube channel. So we've got five webinars this week, one every day at 11, except for on Wednesday, the webinar is on from one to two. So every day at 11, we've got a numeracy webinar, except Wednesday, we're on from one to two. So I'll hand you over to Tony now. All the best, Tony. All right. Thanks, Fergus. Hello and welcome to Maths Week. Uh, as Fergus said, my name is Tony Sweeney. <clears throat> In this webinar, I will present a range of mathematical activities through visual and animation mediums. The activities include a brain teaser, addition and subtraction using a dartboard, finding the size of squares, looking at length through meters and kilometers, measuring fluid through liters and cubic centimeters, a game that involves spatial awareness and evaluation, experiencing the use of weights in kilograms and grams, calculating the price of painting a house a puzzle number grid, calculating the amount of water lost through a leaking tap and creating a, a five-pointed star. So that's our program. And uh, just before we get into the material of it, <clears throat> I just say a few words about the advantages of visual learning. It makes processing of information easier it helps store information for a longer period. It makes learning cost effective. The only you need is just a few clicks on the screen and you're away. Uh, it stimulates imagination and aids better understanding. It makes learning interesting. It creates strong impressions and memories. And lastly, makes learning fun. Now, that's all the theoretical stuff finished, right? Got over that nice and handy. All right. We'll just click on to the first module. And here we have a picture of an old man. And I don't know, maybe you recognize that line. An old man said to me. It comes from Shane McGowan, of course, the fairy tale of New York. But this is a little uh, brain teaser just to get the, the ball rolling. And uh, this was, I heard this from an old man in Belmont Hospital many years ago when I was there. He had, every day he had a, a new brain teaser for us. And uh, he really enjoyed, uh, you know, uh, giving us something that was too difficult to solve. But he enjoyed himself. And it, it serves to remind us like, that old people like maths as well, or I should say older people. Right. So I'll just click it on there. And uh, player one says, "I can tell you the, the I can tell you the answer to an addition sum before I see the numbers that make up that sum." And of course, player two says, "Impossible." Player one again, the answer to the sum that we are going to do is one thousand nine hundred and ninety-eight. Okay. So player one continues. Okay, all numbers have to have three digits. You say the first three digit number, I say the next, you say the third, and I say the fourth. Then the four three digit numbers will be totaled. So player two, three eight two, player one, six one seven, player two, seven four three, player one, two five six. It looks all very complicated so far. So you know how I felt now when this problem was posed to me. 
So here we go. Uh, would I have to move these out of the way a, bit, a little bit? So uh, there it is, 1,998, as I said. And you might uh, like to know how that's done. Well, it's very simple, really. How it's done. You add these, you make sure these add up to 999, and that these do also, right? And the answer is just two less than 2,000. That's easy, is it? Anyway, okay, so we go on to the, that's a light, a light hearted little one. You might want to go through it again to, to get it. So, uh, this module involves the use of maths in a social setting. Playing a dance match, like I will show you how the game is played and show some strategies to use when adding and subtracting numbers. Firstly, we will look at how a darts match is played. When maths are used in social situations, students often have their own strategies for coping. Darts are a good example of this. Most of the calculations are done mentally. I think that teachers should support these strategies rather than change them. So here it goes. Uh, so these, these two uh, Passages, these are two singles, two single fives. And that's a double five, 10. And a treble five, which is 15. 25 to the outer ring. And this is the bullseye, 50. Right, they're all, they're the, num all the numbers. Uh, each game starts on a double. So they're double tops, we call them, and finishes on a double. My favorite double, double 60. Everyone has a favorite double on the board. You can also start and finish on the bullseye. <laughs> now, we look at the, a, a, a game. We look at it from the perspective of one, one thrower. So they have the scoreboard here with 301. Each of the two players is trying to get 301 points. They throw three darts each turn. Each player adds their scores and subtracts the total from 301. So here we start in double 60, we go for 20, and we happen to get 18 on the next one. So I won't deal with the adding up yet. I'll just look at the total. So the total there is 70. So you take 70 away from 301, and you're left with 231. And there it is on the scoreboard. As I said, we won't go through the the calculations, how we calculate it yet, not yet. Players try to build their score quickly by aiming for the highest scores. And the highest score, of course, is treble, three treble 20s. So here's one, two, three. And that adds up to 180. You take 180 from your two, three, one, and you're left with 51 here on the scoreboard, right? Now, now you come to the stage now where you have to be careful. At this stage, players must carefully select the number that they require. So this player must get an odd number so he, she can finish on a double. So you cannot just throw the dart at the board. You have to select an odd number to get onto an even number. So a level will, 11 will bring his or her score down to 40 and allow a finish of double 20. So here's 11. Then you take it from 31 and you're left with 40. And here next you have double tops. And that's game over. Winner. So that's the general bones of the game. Uh, now we, we'll just look at how you calculate the trebles, probably the most difficult thing in the, in, the, in the game. So you have treble 10, which is 30. Now that's an important fact for all the other trebles you will be calculating. Say treble 11, 33, treble 12, 36, treble 13, 39. Now a lot of people will know these trebles, but when it gets higher, say treble 14, that might be a little more difficult. 
it's 42, but you know, I have a calculation aid here to help with that. So yeah, 14 multiplied by three. All you have to do is just multiply three by four, three by that number, by four, and then you add 30. The 30 refers to three tens, right? But that's 12 plus 30 is 42. We'll go to the next one. That's treble 15. So here we we look at the calculation aid again, and it's just three multiplied by five is 15, and add 30 gives you 45. And you can do that with all the rest of the trebles. Here we have it, we have uh, treble 16 is 48, treble 17, 51, treble 18, 54, treble 19, 57, and treble 20 is 60. Okay, that's all the trebles. That's probably the most difficult part. Now, we look at adding the numbers, and in this game, it's all mental uh, arithmetic, and some dark drawers can, they're lightning quick with uh, adding the adding and subtracting these numbers. They, they nearly know ahead of what's going to happen, you think. Now, add two numbers to the nearest 10 and add on the rest. So if you take, if you score these three numbers, right? Four plus six plus, plus seven. First, you just, you add these two, four plus six, and it makes 10, and you just add on the seven. We have them, I have them color coded in order to help. The next one, we we'll look at these three numbers, six plus 14 plus nine. So, you add these two and they become 20. And just add on the nine, and there you have a 29. Okay, that's enough for that. We go for uh, more complicating, uh, complicated adding. So example one here, you have seven plus eight, 15. Change the 15 into tens in units. So it's 10 plus five. Now you put 10 into the bank, and you add this number here, the single number, to the next number you score. Remember, 10 has gone into the bank now, okay? So the next number you score is nine. So you add five to the nine, which gives you 14. And then you add 10 to this number. You take the 10 out of the bank again and add it to the 14. That gives you 24. That might take a little practice to do this, but this is a fairly easy procedure once you get to practice it. Uh, another example. So here we have 17 plus 6 is 23 and change it into tens in units and there you have it. You put 20 into the bank and you bring 3 on to the next score. So you add that to the next score. So the next score is 16. So 16 plus 3 is 19. And now you take the 20 that you put into the bank and you add it to 19 and it gives you 39. Uh, example three. So 19 plus 12 is 31. Change into tens in units, 30 plus one. Put 30 into the bank, bring one and add it to the next number. The next number you scored was 16. So one plus 16 is 17. Now add the 30 you have in the bank onto 17 and it gives you 47. Now, that's enough about addition, so we look at subtracting your score now. So, if we score this amount, we score 67. I won't bother with the makeup with the addition. 67 we scored. And we have to take that away from 301, right? First thing you do is you take one from both, from either side. So now you have 300 minus 66. You take the 60 from 300, you're left with 240, right? And then you take the six away from that, okay? Now, so example two, points remaining on the board are two, three, four. And you take the score away from it, you take 37 away from it. So 30, 234 minus, 30, minus 34, we don't say minus 37, we say minus 34. And it gives you a nice, even round figure of 200. 
Now, in the second time, we take that extra three, that three, because 37 is three bigger than 34. So you take that extra three away and you're left with 197. Okay. Uh, this is the last one for subtracting, but where uh, points remaining uh, 197. And we take this score. This score is 58. So here we have 197 minus 57, <clears throat> minus 57. We don't say minus 58. We say minus, the same as these two numbers. And it leaves you with 140. The next step, then we take that extra one. We take that extra one away, right? And that's 139 left. Okay. And uh, this is a typical finish of a game. Well, my, my preferred finish. A game with 92 left to score. So you have score 60, treble 20, yeah? and uh, you have 32 left. And that leaves you on double 16. But I missed it this time. I only got single 16, right? But because it's an even number, I'm still on a double. So the double that's left is double eight. And there, got it. That's my favorite finish, right? Game over. Now, just the last item on the dartboard is here. Just a little curiosity is that yeah, the numbers here, these two numbers are even, 18 and 4, and here 6 and 10 beside one another, and 8 and 16. So if you're not a very good shot and you want to keep your score even, you just go for them sections. If your score is uneven and you want to bring it down to an even number so that you can get a double, a double near the end, you go for one of these odd numbers. There are four of them together here at the bottom. I, I was playing darts for a long time and I didn't know this fact, but I know it now. Okay, there's some little uh, things here, curious, curious things here. Uh, I call it bending the rules. When you're adding numbers that are a little awkward, such as 17, 19, and 15. You just change them to 20 plus 20 plus 20 equal to 60. And then you take away the bits you added on. You take 3 plus 1 plus 5. You added 3 and 1 and 5 to these numbers here. So that comes to 9. So you take 9 away from 60 and leaves 51. Is that okay, guys? Yeah. I like that one myself. <coughs> uh, more being in the room. When you're adding 19 plus 34 plus 47, so <clears throat> this time you take that 4 and you break it up to 3 and 1. And you do this, you bring 3 to 47 and you bring 1 to 19. And hey presto, you have three even numbers. 20 plus 30 plus 50 is 100. We go down to the next one. And you break the 5 into 4 and 1. And you bring the 4 to that, 36, and 1 out to 17, right? And you add them up, so you have 40, 50, and 18. And that's pretty easy, too. 40 and 50 is 90, and 18 is 108. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> this is some quick way of subtracting numbers. So if you have 243 and you're taking away 68, you change them to 243 minus 63. You take 5 off that number, right? You make it the same last number is this. And you're left with 180. Nice even number. And then you take the five that you neglected to take the first time. You take it away from 180 and you're left with 175. Okay. So that's that's the darts finished. And uh, um, we move on to module three. It's finding the size of squares. Uh, this is introduced to get students to learn to compare and contrast two-dimensional shapes. Students search and find a key piece of information. They then use that information to make further discoveries. At the end, we have a, a verification of the accuracy of the answers. Uh, this is a, it's a confidence building measure because uh, students can uh, see that they, uh, that they have the sum done correctly. So, here we have, uh, let's see, I'll move this out of the way a bit. Uh, all shapes below are squares. Each gray square has a side of one centimeter. So that's important. 
the gray square has a side. Each side is, each, the sides are all equal. You have to find the area of the green, yellow, pink, and purple squares. Then find the total area. By the way, uh, my daughter was helping me with these colors, but I, I see that this pink is not quite pink. So uh, let's go ahead and pretend it is. Anyway, this here, because you have two gray squares, the green side here is two centimeters, right? And the side of this square is four centimeters because this is two, and here we have two here, so that's four. Across here, you have this side is two centimeters, and this is four, so two and four is six, so the purple one is six, six by six. This also is four centimeters, right? This one is three because if you look at this side, it has one, two, three gray squares. So this side is three. And so is this one. You compare it with the three gray squares. So we total we total up these, and uh, the gray the, all the gray squares come to ten centimeters squared. All the green ones four centimeters in squared. Pink is nine centimeters. Another pink one nine centimeters again. Yellow. 16 centimeters squared, yellow 16 again, purple is 6 by 6, 36 centimeters squared. And the, when you add the whole lot of them up, you come to 100 centimeters squared. Now, we come to the verification process, and it's like this. Uh, uh, both this side is 10 centimeters long, and so is this. We can get that from the sides of the squares. And we verify in total areas, 10 multiplied by 10 is 100 centimeters squared. The same as we got when we added up the pieces. So now the student can say, oh, yeah, I'm sure of my answer because he, he could verify it. And as I said, that's a confidence build, building measure. Now, uh, our next, next module is module four, and it's about distance. Now, I have more on the slides, but I, I won't be showing you all the all the slides on the, in this in this section. <clears throat> I'll just show you a representative sample. Uh, in this module, we show the measurement of distance with fractions of a kilometer and its decimal parts. Repetition is used to gain familiarity with these measurements. So here we have it. <clears throat> so from this house to this house, we have it's one kilometer. And that's 1,000 meters. And this is halfway, 500 meters each side. You break it into quarters, 250 meters. Into fifths, 200 meters. Into tenths, 100 meters each. Now, we look at it in decimal uh, perspective. So that's half is 0.5 of a kilometer, quarter is 0.25 of a kilometer. Right, this is just a little question. On the following three slides, red arrows show the length of three journeys walked by a girl. How far did she walk in total? So <clears throat> these, this, this is the red arrow here, and uh, she walked this. First journey is 0.75 kilometers. And this is the second journey, and she went 0.25 kilometers. And I just added on here. And the third journey is uh, 0.5 of a kilometer. So you add the three of them up, and the total is 1.5 kilometers. Okay. And this is just one question. <clears throat> Girl walked the route shown. Uh, sorry, now let's move this out of the way. Beside the broken line from house A to house B. If she had walked by the direct route, how much less would she have walked? So we have to we have to calculate uh, how much how much what's the difference between the straight uh, uh, route and this bindy one. <laughs> so you go two. Four, six, eight, ten. That's a thousand meters, right? And 
line you have here. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. So that's 1,400 meters. And you just get the difference between the two of them. And of course, the difference between the two of them is uh, 400, 400 meters. Okay. Well, that's the end of that section. Getting the notes for the rest of it. <laughs> Uh, just a note at the end of that, a leap of faith, I call it. Students who are not practiced with maths may not trust the formal methods of working through a problem and may prefer to have a visual, concrete or discussion medium to work it through. So that was my experience uh, all during the time I was teaching. So <clears throat> in module five, here we use two modules of prior learning to support the task we are given. We show how volume and capacity are used. We use a question at the end to show that questioning is a normal part of learning. So here we go. Uh, <clears throat> volume is the amount of space a 3D shape takes up. We measure volume in cubic centimeters. Capacity is the amount a shape or container can hold. We measure capacity in milliliters or liters. One milliliter is the amount of liquid that would fill one cubic centimeter. So here we have a container that has uh, 1,000 uh, 1, uh, centimeters cubed. Mm -hmm. That's the volume of it. Now we're going to fill it with liquid, orange juice, if you like. So there's 500 milliliters gone in. And there's another 500 milliliters, right? It's full up, and you, 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 you that's how much it can hold, and it's 1,000 milliliters or one liter. So that's a nice uh, representation of the difference between the two things. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> in this problem that we're going to face, uh, we have uh, prior learning. Uh, so. This is fractions of a quantity. So here we look at how to get uh, three quarters of uh, of something. So here we divide it into four equal amounts to get quarters, right? And then we get three quarters of that. So we can see that three quarters of 20 is 15. Mm -hmm. The formal method is get three quarters of 20. So you, 20 divided by four is five quarter. And you get that five then, and you multiply it by three to get three quarters. So that's 15 is three quarters. So that's one piece of prior learning. The second bit is uh, cubic measurement. So this is one cubic centimeter, like that. And we just show, uh, a rectangular cuboid. So, and how you measure it and how it's done. So, you just count them all out. And that's 24 centimeters cubed. All right. This is the formal method, of course. You know, you can see the difference between the two methods. So, now we come to the, the, the next uh, problem here. Uh, this is the problem we're leading up to, I should say. How many, how many 10 milliliter bottles of water are left over when three quarters of the tank is filled? When three quarters of this tank is filled? <clears throat> how many of these bottles are left over? There are 32 here altogether. So we start off with this fact here. One centimeter cube is equal to one milliliter. Right. The volume of the tank is 10 by 8 by 4, which is 320 centimeters cubed. So now we have the volume, volume of the tank. We get three quarters of that. So we divide by four, multiply by three, and we are left with 240 centimeters cubed. Now, that 240 centimeters cubed, it holds 240 milliliters, right? 
240 milliliters is the same as 24 bottles of water because each of them hold 10 milliliters, right? So we had 32 bottles starting out and we take 24 bottles away from it and we're left with eight bottles. Eight bottles will be left over. And this question here just thrown in for students so that they get used to asking questions. Why is this important? One centimeter cubed is equal to one. It's because sometimes maybe paint or medicines or um, anything you have to, lots of these things you buy in the shop, they might be stated in cubic centimeters sometimes and sometimes in milliliters. So you want to know how the two of them, how they correspond. Now we come to the next module, which is a, it's a card game. And uh, this game is introduced to show that when you change one procedure in a game, it may cause other factors to change. It encourages the student to think in a number of directions. So it's like this. <clears throat> so how many complete red cards can you place on the green card? You cannot overlap the red cards. Each red card is worth five points if placed horizontally like that, and 4.5 points if placed vertically. So vertically, uh, uh, sorry, vertically like that, horizontally like that. Sorry. How can you get the highest score? So let's have a look at the solution. <clears throat> so we'll, we'll test the first one with, with five points, right? Each, right? And we total them up and we get 45 points. We try it a different way. We put them standing up, 4.5 points for each one standing up. And we total that up and we just get 36 points. Now, the last one is the one that matters, of course. If, uh, so that we put six of them like that and we put four of them like that. And here's the answer. So, is 30 points and 18 points, so we have 48 points. So that's that's the winner. Top score. <clears throat> we go to uh, uh, module seven, <clears throat> weights. And uh, here I use a lot of repetition, which is designed to get students familiar with uh, kilograms and grams. So here, how many weights of 500 grams each on the right hand side of the scale will balance four kilometric kilograms on the left hand side. So we put four up first, and we put two more, and two more. And you can see from the little red hand in the middle here, it's pointed upwards. So it's that's the, the that's balanced. Sample two. So we have one kilogram here. I need to find how many of these will balance it. Two one, three one, three, and the fourth one balances. So four of these are the same as one of these. Example three. So three kilograms here. How many of these will you put on? Here you put on four, the fifth one, and two of these smaller ones, right? Two fifty grams. And that's balanced. Okay, that was a quick run through the app. Lot of a lot more of these on the on the, the full uh, PowerPoint. <laughs> uh, module eight. This module is introduced with the objective of helping students in their work lives. Often talented people will not embark on private work because they are unsure of how to price it. We start off with a revision of three modules of prior learning to support the work and finish with an explanation of the problem in words. So this is painting the outside walls of a house. So prior learning is how to do area, one centimeter squared, right? And here, this is how you do it. You count it out to make sure. And it's 20 centimeters cubed. The way it's done formally is like this, five by four, the length by the breadth is 20 centimeters squared. At the second bit of prior learning, we have to get this blue stripe around here. So we we get the area inside the brown border, five by four, 20 centimeters squared, and we get the area inside the red border, which is 
three by two, six centimeters squared. And we take one from the other and we're left with 14 centimeters squared. So that's the blue area, it's 14 centimeters squared. <laughs> Okay, so the next one we look at here is a uh, prior learning uh, tree. We find the area of a triangle. So we look at the perpendicular height, which is five centimeters, and the base here is eight centimeters. And to get the area of a triangle, you multiply the perpendicular height by half the base. So here it is, five by half the base, which is four, is 20 centimeters squared. So that's how you get the area of a triangle. Now we move on to the bit that we have to do. We look at <coughs> finding the area to be painted, the area of the house. So here's our little house, a three bedroom house. So we look at the chimney first and the area of the chimney stack is one meter squared. So we put that fact down there for the moment. And uh, We look at we look at the, the area of the doors and the windows, and here we have them, the various areas. Now we add them up. They come to. Or does he have to move this out of the way? Uh, Seven point five meters squared, and the back are the same. So that they both come to uh, fifteen meters squared. The windows and doors and back and the front. Okay. So we look at the front wall of the house, and that's three by 14, that's 42 meters square. And the back would be the same. So that's 84 meters squared for the back and the front. And we leave that fact there. The next one, we look at the top end of the gable. And here we look at it straight on, and it's two meters high by 10 meters wide. So it's this, it's the, uh, the end of the higher gable is two by five is 10 meters squared. The lower gable is three multiplied by 10 is 30 meters squared. So we add the two of them up here together. That's 10 and 30 is 40 meters squared. And uh, the area of the two gables then is 40 meters squared multiplied by two is 80 meters squared. Now we'll total all that up together. <coughs> So you have the two gables here, and you have the front and back, and you have the area of the chimney stack, and it's 165 meters squared. Now we take away this bit to be for the windows and the doors. So minus so that we're left with 150 meters squared. And because we're putting two coats of paint on, that's 300 meters squared, twice that. Okay, 300 meters squared. Now. We hold on to that fact, and we go into the nitty-gritty of this. So, one litre of paint covers an area of 12 metres squared with one coat of paint. Now, that, it tells you that on the 10. And we look at uh, the, the total area we have to do is 300 metres, and divided by 12 metres squared, and that leaves you with, yeah, you need 25 litres of paint. Can of paint holds five liters in this in this case. You can get bigger tins, of course. Uh, Twenty-five liters divided by five leaves you with five cans of paint. So you'll be leaving the shop with five cans of paint, five liters each. So five cans multiplied by thirty-two fifty is one hundred and sixty-two fifty. Uh, uh, overheads. The cost of transport is. The job is 30 euros. The cost of miscellaneous, like brushes and stuff like that, is 10 euros. So that's 40 euros altogether. Now, the time 50 meters squared painted per hour. Total time 300 meters squared divided by 50 meters squared is six hours. So it takes six hours to put on two coats of paint. The cost of labor 20 euros per hour, and that's 20 multiplied by six, the six hours, 120 euros. So here we add them up, the, the, the various amounts, and we come to, what did I take this out of the way again? Uh, we come to uh, 300 and, 
2250. And then when you add on, say I, in this case, I put on 12% fat, and that leaves you with 361.20. Okay. <clears throat> so this is another way of looking at the problem. Uh, uh, some people might prefer this, and it's an approach in words to solve uh, approach in words to solving the problem. So it's all out there in text. Now I won't read that through; but it'll bore you. But but it's it may help to explain some of the calculations that have gone before. So I'll move on to the next the next module. So this is I'm just checking the time here. I have. Uh, 15 minutes left. <clears throat> so, module A. This module is introduced with the objective of helping students in their work lives. Often, talented people will not embark. <clears throat> uh, so, that's sorry, that's no, not the one. Sorry. Module 9. Uh, this pu puzzle helps the student to select the key information that is given in the puzzle and to use it to discover further information. So this is changing utensils to numbers. So here we have a, a little puzzle, a puzzle number grid. Each type of kitchen utensil represents a different positive whole number. A spoon has half the value of a fork. Find all the values. Draw in the missing utensil. So here we go. The solution. A spoon has half the value of a fork. So if we look at the two spoons are equal to a fork. So in row A across here, it's equal to 16. So therefore, the fork is equal to half that, which is eight. And these are two fours. The two spoons are two fours. Okay, four plus eight, yeah, okay, 16. So we put in these values, two fours here, and we put in eight for the fork. Okay, and there's another fork, so we put eight for that also. Column E. Is the next one, this one in the middle here. So we have two of them solved, so we just need to get the value of the knife. And we know it's equal to all is equal to 23. So here we go. So we need to figure out what this is. Two eights are 16 and take it away from 23. And that leaves you with seven for the knife. Okay. Now row C is the next one we tackle because we have we have we know the value of the knife, and these two are the same, two spatulas. So here, we don't know what they are tomorrow. We take seven away from 25, which leaves us with 18. And then you half, because these are equal. So that's nine each, right? So there's, we put in the two nines there. <laughs> now, column D is the next one we'll go for, because we have that value and that value. We don't know that value, but we know the total is equal to 17. So here, we look at this and we we can figure out this that is equal to four. And we put four in there and we know that it's a spoon. So we have to draw in the spoon and we draw it in like this. Okay, right. And now column F is the next one. <clears throat> and we have a spoon, uh, a whisk and a, a spatula. So we only need to get the whisk, right? So four and nine is 13 and take it away from 18. And you know that this is five then. So, okay, let me put five in. And that's that. Okay, completed. <coughs> now, we come to uh, module 10. And I have 10 minutes yet. <laughs> uh, module. Uh, when I was uh, I was in Padikoy, where I come from originally, and, uh, I was designing one of these slides and the, the tap over the kitchen sink decided to start dripping. I was in the house of my own and it was making a, I thought it was a really loud noise, you know. And rather than getting distracted by the no noise, I decided to do something positive about it. You know, saving water is an environmental concern for everybody. But I like turning negatives into positives. Maybe this approach would be encouraging for students. Uh, this is a good example of turning a negative into a positive. The dripping water tap could have been a distraction, but in this instance, it was an inspiration. Uh, in this module two, the 12 and 24 hour clock is included uh, as an example of incidental learning. 
So click in tap. So which to give you the full benefit. So this is what I heard, you know, and it sounded three, four times as loud. So uh, now it take a while to 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 uh, to fill the fill the basin. But I'll turn that down a bit again now. And so I put a graduated cylinder under it. So there it is. It drips away again. And uh, so it, that will take a long time to fill up. So I just left it to its own devices, right? And uh, I looked at it. I, I timed it. So here I used the 12-hour clock and the 24 hour clock. And we start them off together like this. <clears throat> now, this was happening, of course, when I, you know, I just left it overnight and, uh, and kept it in the morning. Okay, so that's the 24, 24 hours, not 12 hours, not 24 hours. And this is how much water was, so 0.5 of a litre in 24 hours. Now, so that's 24 hours one day, 365 days in the year. So you multiply it by 0.5 of a litre and you, let, you, you get 182.5 litres per year. Now, right? Now, so that's that. Now, uh, module 11. So using geometry, it is a little present for the top of the tree. Now, a full circle is 360 degrees. And if you divide it by five, you get 72 degrees each step. So each step here, you when you turn here, 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 here and here again. That completes the 360 degrees. Now, if you're looking at a straight line, <clears throat> 180 degrees, and you take 72 degrees from it, you're left with 108. So this, these inner, these inner angles are 108. So we go like this, 108, then all 108. Now, we will we decide to make this line uh, six centimeters. And we get our, our protractor, put a little dot up here where it's 108 degrees. And draw a line, and 108 degrees, and protractor again, 108 degrees again, and protractor again, 108 degrees, protractor again, and you see it's 108 degrees where the red dot is. Okay, and all the sides are all equal, they're all six centimeters each, right? So we, 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 we join the vertices. Okay, we take a little golden star out of it, like this. And you, knew, you know the tune, I suppose. Okay, I won't sing it for you. Now, this this last item, uh, I don't I don't know the name of this, but I said I just put this on as a, as a curious object, a beautiful thing. I, I it's in the house I rent in Ballycroy, and uh, it's hanging at the on the back of the door, and uh, I don't know where it came from, but uh, I thought it was magnificent. Uh, it's made from barley straw, and uh, so. Anybody that has the knows the name of it can send email me there. My, there's my email, Tawini at gmail.com. Right. And uh, uh, thank you for your attention. Right. Wonderful. Any, any questions now? And uh, I'll try to answer them. Tony, thanks a million. That was really great. So many practical little tips on 
how to calculate so many things. So it was great. It made things easy. I'm not great at math, but uh, I understood everything. And there's lots of tips I could use actually with my kids. <laughs> so yeah, if anyone has any questions for Tony, I'd just ask you to unmute now and, and just ask um, anything you've seen or anything else on numeracy at all, just fire away with Tony. I'd like to ask Tony a question, can I? Yeah, work away, Sharon. And um, just Tony, what software did you use for your visuals? They were very good. Oh, that's a PowerPoint. PowerPoint. Yeah. Uh, if you if you go into uh, PowerPoint Heaven uh, on on the internet, you'll get a lot of these tips. But uh, I, I originally learned how to do this uh, doing Cardinal Draw way back. I I don't know if that's still on the market, but that was the basis of. And I set it. I just started designing stuff way back, maybe uh, in 2012 or so. And I just kept building it up. And you learn more uh, techniques as you go along. And uh, of course, my sons are into high tech, and they, when I'm stuck, I can call on them. Like you know, <laughs> oh, you send us their email. Uh, sorry. Send us your son's email. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can. Only did you say it's. Car can you just say it clearly? Carl Draw, is that what you said? Carl Draw was the original one. That How do you I spell that? C O R P L, I think. Carl Draw. Draw, D R I W. Draw. And the one, uh, the one on the internet is PowerPoint Heaven. Heaven. PowerPoint Heaven. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Of course, thanks. of course, some of the, some of, you know, some of the tutorials are they're very long winded. And, uh, I, I don't have a lot of patience with them myself, but uh, <laughs> I'm patient enough besides, but but uh, I don't know, there's just something about tutorials that just get me down a bit. But um, if you, I, I learned a lot from uh, this guy. He did design in, in uh, business. He did it for the university and he did it for Connolly Sports. Um, uh, Paul Pitts was his name and he was great. And I kept... I kept I went out to him every Saturday morning for I don't know so many weeks and eventually I was asking more questions than he was able to answer. So he said it's time for you to finish up. <laughs> so and Tony, could you put together most of that presentation with PowerPoint Heaven or would you need to know a lot about Carl Draw? You probably you won't have a good lot of experience because there's a lot of little uh, tricks. There's a lot of little tricks involved. Once you get to know, say, now, maybe 20 procedures, then you can start combining them. Like, for instance, like when you want the hands of the clock to go around, it's just a, cir it's, it's just a circle with a, a, a hand on it. And it, it, it seems to be going around of its own accord, but you you click on the circle and you take the color away so it, it can't be seen, but it's still spinning. Okay, okay, thanks. Yeah. Um, Tony, there's another message here in the chat box from Siobhan O'Keefe. She says, thanks, Tony. Always love your presentations. I used your example from last year to price tiles and calculations of area with my apprentices. Looking forward to using your pricing of paint calculations. Keep up the good work. Thanks. Oh, that's great. That's fantastic. I, I always feel that uh, as teachers, we should make we should make a difference in people's lives because you know, some people say, oh, I could do that job, I could do that, but I'm afraid because I don't know, I don't know how to calculate things. And oh, that's an awful pity because I, I've seen during my teaching career, I've seen so many people thrive, like, you know, when, when the blockages have been taken away and it's it makes their life, you know. That's wonderful to hear. Thanks, Siobhan. And um, any other questions there? I just ask you to unmute and fire away, ask Tony. Okay, Tony, um, it looks like that's it. There's nothing else has popped up in the chat box. So it just leaves me to say thanks again. Uh, you can see from that presentation, you put huge effort in and huge preparation and really appreciate it. As the other, um, Siobhan, I think her name was, Siobhan O'Keefe said, you always put huge effort and huge prep into your preparations, which really make it easy to see step by step how people can do it. And I hope it gives inspiration to the other numeracy tutors who are watching. So thanks so much, Tony.
I still I still love mathematics. I think <laughs> I love, I, this is my hobby. <laughs> oh, excellent. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, thanks Margaret for for helping out as well. And uh, some Elaine O'Brien sends in great visuals and some fantastic tips. Thanks Tony. Oh, so thank you very much. yeah, that went if really I, well. If so. I might add, Fergal, it's Siobhan here. Um, I used uh, the exercise on the tiles. We actually did it like a class exercise and everybody joined in and we we actually joked about and if we did it for cash but you know forget about return to revenue and things like that but it was an absolutely brilliant class exercise because everybody got involved they discussed um i actually used it um when we were putting down flooring i just gave a, a calculation for the size of the floor tile and the size of the room and discussion took place then about the different sizes of floor tiles so yeah. it was an abs thanks ever so much. Um That's That's absolutely brilliant. Absolutely. So we'll be painting the wall calculations now. I have a class uh, at the end of the week and thanks a million. I will be working on that. Thank you. That's right. And uh, uh, that's great because to hear that news, that feedback, because it drives me on to do something oh. else next year, you know. Oh, so, I look forward to it. Really looking uh, forward to it. Thank you very much. <laughs> thanks, Siobhan. Um, and as I said earlier, Tony's going to send me his presentation now, so I'll send it out to everybody who's registered. And obviously, I'll, I've recorded this if you or a colleague wants to look back on it again later, just to hear again some things Tony said. You can do that, but I won't. might not have time this week. It might be next week by the time it's on the NALA YouTube channel. So you go NALA Ireland YouTube, and we have the recordings of all the webinars. So, yeah, if anyone's interested, tomorrow we've got rounding and approximation at 11 o'clock. Mary Reardon, who's a... Uh, tutor in Limerick and Clare ETB. And then on Wednesday, we've got um, Sheila Clowry and she's um, doing comparing three mobile phone company offers. So she's just kind of comparing the offers and seeing which one are better value and all value for money. So it could be interesting for anybody, numeracy tutor or not. And then on Thursday morning, uh, we've got numeracy in the media from Cathy O'Sullivan from the University of Galway. And on Friday morning, we've got Elaine and Sharon actually are here today. Hi, Elaine and Sharon. Thanks for supporting today. And they're um, doing a 11 o'clock uh, Friday morning on making maths relevant. They work in Youth Week, I think it is, in Blanchetown. So, Tony, thanks again and all the best. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Hopefully see you as the week goes on. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.